Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Octopop and today I'll be teaching you or showing you how I made this art piece. So for the first step, you need to know what pose your character will be on, what background, expression or mood you want the piece to have. In my case, I just scroll through Pinterest and try to find something that matched the character's vibe. Um, this character is my friend's original character. She's a cat and that's all I know about her. <laughs> I know cats are usually known that they usually don't like water, but I just realized that when I almost finished the drawing, so kinda late. Eh? Um, don't make the same mistake I did. The second step is to start sketching the reference image you chose. I start to draw the basic shapes of the reference before I get into the details of line art. I used to draw the reference image as the same canvas size, like this, but I learned that you'll start to depend on the reference in the future. Like me right now, I'm struggling. Um, this will make you struggle in the future. So what I try here is that I try to make making the shapes the reference image had, like, like this. The next step is to start with the line art. I suggest you start making the line art with different depths in a noticeable way, like mine, where I do the line art and it looks like it has the same depths. You can see here, I try doing that over with the butt area and the face. The face line art looks thicker, while the back area the line art is thinner, as it's far from the viewer's point. Did you draw your sketch with a thick brush and can't draw the line art properly because of it? I have a suggestion for this problem, as it was a common thing it happened to me. It's a little more time consuming, but um, I suggest you start drawing with the line art in a thin way. So technically draw the line art thin. Uh, later, start to add the depths over the thin line art, or just start another new layer and try to control your strength with your pencil. I'm sure there are many other ways to draw a bare line art, but that's how I did do it and what worked with me. Once I finished the line art, I started to choose the colors. I tried putting colors that don't blend in with the character. In order to do that, I first tried to put some colors for me to have an idea what I want them to be like. Then I turn the canvas into a black and white color by adding a layer on top of everything, fill it with a white color and put it the layer as saturation. You can see here that I'm coloring the water first, but you can do that later when you start adding the shadows and highlights. I'll explain it in a bit, but I start to color the water because I was excited to start with that first. The next step is the shadows. Shadows make the image have a contrast, and contrast is very important in an art piece as it helps the character not blend in with the background or it helps make the character pop out more. I chose a shadow color for the skin with a slightly more red darker color. For the hair, I also chose a darker color and start adding the shading where I think the, the shadows belong um, as I look at the reference every now and then. Luckily, the reference I used had a similar orangey color, so it was easier for me to think about the colors of the shadows. More than a tip, this is how I usually shade the skin. I first choose the skin color as the base. After this, I move the color to the left if I wanted to have a warmer look on the skin, or left when I wanted to have a cooler look. After choosing to move it to the right or left, I choose a darker color and start shading. I usually put the shadows layer as multiply, but this is not always the case. It depends whether I like the look, the look of it, or if I want to modify the colors. In this step, I start focusing on these highlights. You can see I start putting a bluish color on top of the shadow. This is because I want the shadow to have a reflection of the blue sky. It makes the shading look more softer or natural, in my opinion. In the eyes, I also start shading and adding some highlights. Um, to be honest, I just copied an eye art style as a reference that I saw on Pinterest, and um, I liked it. In the hair, I highlighted it with a pinkish color. I know, I know, that does not look like pink, but trust me, it is pink. That's color theory for you, alright? I hate color theory. Anyways, and, and later I add some blue highlights to make an illusion of the reflection with the blue sky and the water. And um, the water float? I tried searching the translation of this floating thing, but it said it was a life preserver, uh, which sounded kind of weird, but I don't know, English is not my main language, so 
yeah. Here I start to add more shadows, highlights, liquefy some stuff, and more if I feel like something is wrong. I flip the canvas, turn the image into black and white as I add even more modifications. And once I feel like my art piece is done, I start adding some effects like noise and chromatic aberration, if that's what you call it, um, in the adjustment settings. And we're done! If I, could if I could go back with this piece, I would have added some strands of hair and maybe erase a little bit of the line art to make it prettier. But I was already too eager to finish the piece. And this is the longest art piece I've done in my life. It took me 9 hours with 44 minutes. Technically, almost 10 hours of work. It usually takes me like a maximum 5 or 6 hours to finish one drawing. But this is one this one took me way more, but I had fun. Anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something from this video or even if you didn't learn anything new, I hope you enjoyed watching the process and result. I would appreciate it very much if you subscribe, like and comment on this video. And thank you. See you later. Probably like another three months. <laughs> but I'll try to keep posting more frequently. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>